This video was made possible by Wix. If you're ready to create a website, head over to wix.com slash go slash infographics2019 to try out one of their premium plans right now. Though often lumped together, deaf people and mute people are two separate types of people, and just because one is deaf does not mean that they are mute. Caused by illness, injury, or a medical mistake, muteness can rob someone of their primary method of communicating with the world. But have you ever wondered what it would be like to never use your voice again? Hello and welcome to another special challenge episode of the Infographics Show. Today we're going to be once more using your favorite and our least important guinea pig, we mean staff writer, to find out what life is like if you don't speak for a week. Day 1 Wow, when I started doing all these challenge episodes for infographics, I thought it'd be kind of fun. Something that takes you out of your comfort zone and maybe pushes your boundaries a bit, all while getting paid for it. Sounded like a win-win for someone adventurous like me. Then I started actually doing the challenges. No underwear for a month. Okay, that's easy enough. Don't leave the house for a month. Um, okay, not so easy. Sleep all night and stay up all day for a month. Alright, getting rougher. Eat all your food through a straw for a week. Now it's getting painful. My point is that when I started these, I tried to think of all the zany things I might end up doing, and not once did I think about not speaking for an entire week. I can only be grateful that the devils that the infographic show secretly worships and feeds a steady diet of human misery, my misery, didn't decide to make this a month-long challenge as well. So I get to experience what life is like for someone who cannot speak for a whole week. Which, and I hate this about me, I'm kind of interested to try already. That's despite the fact that I've done this whole shtick long enough to know that it's going to get difficult, and then it's going to be painful in some way or another. This time at least it's pretty obvious. How in the world am I going to get through life without speaking for a whole week? Luckily we are living in the digital age and as I sat down to plan out the scope of this challenge, I realized that I might actually be able to breeze through without uttering a single word. Instead of calling someone on the phone, I can text. Instead of going to the grocery store, I can have groceries or food delivered to me via an app, and never once have to talk to anyone. The real problem is going to be dealing with the girlfriend, since as most of you know by now, we live together. That and any unexpected social plans, which I'm insisting that we don't change at all, because the challenge is only fair if I get a real taste of what this lifestyle is like, so if any experts or things pop up, I'll be attending as a complete mute. That will take some serious planning. I'll update once every two days or so to fill you in on my week of silence. Right now, it's 7 a.m. on Monday and my last official words for a week were a really bad dad joke that I told the girlfriend as she was leaving for work. Did you hear about the restaurant on the moon? Great food, but no atmosphere. I love dad jokes. I just realized though that if something tragic and sudden were to happen to me, a dad joke might be the last thing anyone ever heard me say. I'm kind of okay with that. Day 3 Life is certainly interesting when you're not allowed to speak. It's weird how quiet the house gets during the day without me speaking. I typically work from home if I'm not out on a gig as a photographer, and I have the house to myself with the dog until late at night when the girlfriend gets back. I never realized how much I talked to myself out loud when home alone though until suddenly I couldn't talk anymore. I guess we all talk to ourselves sometimes, but it became pretty obvious these last two days that I probably do it more than the average person because the house just feels so eerily silent now. It's kind of been creeping me out, to be honest. So now to compensate I play the TV extra loud. You know that irrational feeling that a serial killer is lurking in your quiet house? I get that feeling all the time now. I tried to do my plan of having groceries delivered to me so I'd avoid the hassle of trying to play mute in public, but then I saw what the delivery fees for someone to bring me groceries from literally right across the street, and I flat out refused to do it. It's not that I'm cheap, it's just preposterous I'm paying almost $5 extra for what is literally a 3 minute walk for me. Also, I realized that I would look like the laziest human being alive to the delivery driver if I seriously had them drive from wherever in town they were just to bring me groceries from across the street. That's a problem I did think of a solution for though. I could pull out my crutches from when I was injured a long time ago and pretend I couldn't walk, but ultimately I just couldn't stomach paying $5 for a 3 minute walk. So my first foray into the real world without speaking was mostly uneventful. I typically wear headphones and blast my music anyways when I go out of the house because I'm not really a people person and it's the perfect way to ignore Girl Scouts or anyone with a clipboard who wants your support for a million different causes. Once I got stopped by a lady who said she was signing a petition for improved mental 
mental health care for kids in public school. I told her I hated kids with mental health, and she never bothered me again for the rest of the week that she was in front of our grocery store. The girlfriend was with me, and she was so embarrassed that she punched me hard in the arm. And I told her I was joking, but while she wasn't looking, I gave the petition lady the craziest look I could, and it worked. Bought myself one week of peace. Once I did the same with Girl Scouts, just kneeled down and started explaining how she was being exploited for her labor by the cookie maker and only receiving a tiny fraction of the value of her labor in return. And even that was in the form of funds for her troop to go camping or something while the cookie company kept most of the monetary profits. One of the adults quickly pulled the little girl away from me and I didn't get bothered again for the rest of the month that they were there. Anyways, the trip went off without a hitch until I got to the register and the girl tried to make conversation. See, I go to this grocery store all the time for seven years now, so everyone there knows me. I couldn't just blow the cashier off, so instead I pointed at my throat and pretended to be sick. Luckily, she bought it, but it made me realize something. See, my plan had just been to pretend to be mute, but suddenly I feel really uncomfortable just pretending to be mute and having people believe that I have a real disability. It feels like a terrible thing to do when there's thousands of real people out there who are unable to speak. I guess I'll stick with the sick story for now, but I doubt it'll hold in a serious social engagement. The other thing to report is that the girlfriend has been texting me a lot. She won't admit it, but I think she secretly really misses talking to me, so she's overcompensating with texts. It's kind of sweet, and thinking about it suddenly made me feel kind of sad. Day 5 well, this challenge has been a lot easier than I thought it would be, mostly because I work from home and my writing work requires very little actual voice communication with clients. However, last night the heat got turned up to 11. The girlfriend's work had a social mixer type event. Typically, I hate these things, but from time to time the girlfriend will drag me to one though, and I tend to spend the time at the open bar doing my best to really push the generosity of the free drinks, especially the gin and tonics. We decided that my cover story would be that I was really ill, my voice was practically gone and it was painful for me to speak. Girlfriend made something up about laryngitis or something. She knows just enough about medicine to make it believable. As we were on our way, I wasn't happy at first until I realized that now I had the perfect excuse not to speak to anyone at this event and that suddenly made me really happy. Until the girlfriend told me she wasn't going to let me spend the entire night at the open bar. People need to see your face more at these things, it's good to network, she said. If people want to see more of me, they can always right click to save my Facebook profile pic. Then they can see me anytime they like. To say that the girlfriend took full advantage of the fact that I couldn't refute anything she or anyone else said would be an understatement. She committed us to at least a dozen little dinner dates with other couples, which I hate with all my heart. And she committed us to a game night with a bunch of people I don't know. I love board games, but I hate playing them with a bunch of strangers. Once I played Cards Against Humanity with a group of total strangers, and let's just say that night ended with someone crying after I played a dead parent smell like card. Apparently her parents had just died a week or two earlier and everyone but me, the stranger, knew. I don't know when the girlfriend discovered that she had the power to commit me to all sorts of things I would never ever do, but I suspect that she's been planning it from the get-go because she is in fact a sadistic and evil genius. To say I was annoyed would be an understatement. Day 7 I can finally speak again! Holy crap, I have seriously missed the sound of my own voice. The first time I talked, my vocal cords squeaked from disuse, but thankfully I was by myself when it happened. This challenge has been difficult, to say the least. And not just because of not being able to talk, but because of fighting the urge to speak in the first place. We take talking for granted, it becomes really obvious when you stop talking just how much we use our voice for communication. Yes, even in our digitally connected world. I know what you're all thinking though, what happened at game night? Well, it was predictably terrible for one, and I'm not sure if not talking made it worse or not. We played Risk, which doesn't really require any talking, so that's great. Except I get really competitive with board games, like really competitive. See, there's an unspoken social contract you enter into when you do a fun board game night with your girlfriend's friends and co-workers. You play to have fun, not to win. And you are nice to people who are terrible at the game and make sure that they're included and get to play and have fun. I don't play to have fun, I play to win. I was Napoleon slashing my way across Europe and Asia, making and breaking alliances as it suited me. The game was over in 30 minutes, which I feel is some kind of record, and all without me saying a word, just writing messages out on a notepad. The great thing about people believing that you are really ill and can't speak though, is that nobody tries to, so no awkward forced conversations with a bunch of strangers. That was a big plus for me, and something I could get used to. I've spent the week communicating via post-it notes or text messages, and my final report is that it's really, really lonely not having a conversation with someone. Sure, modern life might make it really easy to not use your voice to talk, but it also robs your conversations of depth and meaning. 
they don't flow the way they would if you could speak. And I think the event that summed it up best for me was when me and the girlfriend were driving home last night. She got really sad and said that she really missed me this week. And I knew what she was saying. Not being able to have conversations with me really made her miss me. Then she told me that she'd been thinking about the same thing I had thought about on day one. After I spoke the last thing I've said to her all week, she said, what if something really sudden and tragic happened and the last thing I ever heard from you was one of your stupid bad jokes? I could tell she was really sad. So I grabbed her phone and pulled up her voice memos and showed her that before the week had started I recorded I love you on her phone. Not speaking may be a great way to get you out of really boring and dreadful social events that you don't want to attend or at least get you out of having to talk to anyone at those events, but it really boxes your life in. You don't realize how free you are to express yourself with your voice until it's no longer there, and conversations without it are slow, frustrating, and really shallow. I have a newfound appreciation for the struggles of mute people, or even deaf people who have difficulty speaking with people and making themselves understood. Thinking about trying out your own no speaking challenge? Wonder what you'll do to fill the time? How about finally designing that website you keep putting off? But don't worry, it's going to be much easier than any of our challenges because you'll be using Wix. Their powerful design tools let you build a site in seconds using fully customizable templates, or build it from the ground up with their robust suite of design tools. Plus, their subscription services offer 24-7 tech support, and an extensive knowledge base is always available to help you take on any problem. Try out Wix today by visiting the link in the description or going to wix.com slash go slash infographics 2019. Think you could handle not speaking for a week? What other challenges should should we put our favorite lab rat through? Let us know in the comments. And if you like this one, check out I Didn't Wear Underwear for a Month. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more great content.